Hi everybody, Jen Furlong here. Today I want to spend some time talking about how to effectively manage anxiety. Whenever I start a public speaking course, I like to start the conversation by asking the students what are their perceptions of public speaking? Um, what is it about public speaking that they don't enjoy? Because most people will tell you they just don't like getting in front of a group of people to talk. And so then I'll ask the students, well, why is that? Why don't you enjoy getting in front of a group of people to do a presentation? And most of the time they'll say, well, because I get nervous. And to that I respond, congratulations, you're human. <laughs> Everybody gets at least a little bit nervous at the thought of speaking in front of a group of people. Delivering a formal presentation can be a frightening thing. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about anxiety and how to get over the idea of you need to overcome your fear of public speaking. Um, if you think you're going to try to overcome the fear of public speaking, what you're actually doing is just, you're just going to give yourself more anxiety about having anxiety over speaking in public. And that's not going to do, it's a vicious cycle. It's not going to do you any good. So stop thinking about ways to overcome your nervousness. You're never, most likely you're never going to get over the fear or the anxiety or the nervousness. However, you can learn how to effectively manage your anxiety and actually use that anxiety, use that nervous energy as fuel for your presentation. So I'm going to give you real quick, five tips on some things that you can do to help you manage that anxiety just a little bit better. Tip number one is you got to have a plan. A part of the plan is understanding who's in the audience so that you can tailor the message to that specific audience. Understand how much time do you have to do your presentation because you need to be able to deliver your message in a clear and concise way. So having the plan, writing out the speech in the form of an outline so that you have a solid beginning, middle, and end so that the information flows smoothly and logically from one idea to the next so that it's not only easy for the audience to follow, but it's easy for them to understand. I guarantee you, you will feel a lot better and you'll be able to manage your anxiety more effectively if you go into your situation with at least having a solid plan. The second thing you can do in order to effectively manage your anxiety is to not only have a plan, but to practice that plan. It's not enough to just review your outline, mumble it a few times, maybe go over it in your head a few times and think that you're ready to actually stand up and do the presentation. That's not how things work. If you are a musician, you understand the importance of practice. If you're an athlete, you understand the importance of practice. If you're into drama, you understand the value of practice. Public speaking is no different from any of those things. Public speaking is a skill just like any other skill. The more you practice at it, the better you get. Please remember, practice does not make perfect. Practice makes better. The third thing you can do in order to more effectively manage your anxiety is to stop worrying about your nonverbals. One question I get asked a lot is, what do I do with my hand gestures? What do I do with my hands? You know, what about my body movement? What about my posture? What about my facial expressions? And of course, that's an important part of public speaking. It does help to enhance the message that you're trying to get across to the audience, but it should be organic. It should be something that happens naturally as a part of the communication process. So one of the things that I will ask in return is, well, what, did you, what do you do with your hands when you're having a normal everyday conversation? Well, I don't know. I don't really think about it. Well, you shouldn't think about it in a public speaking situation either. Let it happen naturally. Let it flow with the message that you're trying to send. 
Now, sometimes you might want to incorporate a specific gesture. If you want to emphasize a point, or if you want to actually uh, get your communication across non-verbally rather than verbally. You know, for example, if I were to say, and to my enemies, I say, live long and prosper. You know, that would be a way to emphasize a certain message through my nonverbal communication. But other than that, don't worry so much about the nonverbals. Let it happen naturally. It should be organic to the message. Um, the only time you really want to pay closer attention to your nonverbals, let's say if they do tend to call attention to themselves. Let's say you wave your hands all over the place and you're knocking things over and it's just kind of out of control and people are paying more attention to your hand gestures than they are to the message that you're trying to convey. Then you want to start worrying about that. But in that case, go ahead and just take a video of yourself, practice in front of the mirror, be mindful of it and everything will be fine, I promise you. Number four, power poses. This is probably one of the most effective ways to manage your anxiety. Amy Cuddy did a wonderful TED Talk talking about her research and how you can use power poses to actually trick your mind and your body into being more confident than what it already is. There are two key hormones that her research has focused on, and that would be testosterone and cortisol. And what she has found, you know, in your nonverbals, let's say you stand there in a power pose and you do, or you stretch your hands out, you know, kind of like when you do when you win a game, you know, you feel powerful, you feel confident, you know, you feel great in that particular moment in time. Well, when people look at those nonverbals, when they see you doing those poses, they see you as someone who is confident, as someone who is powerful, as someone who's in control. But an interesting thing that's happening at the same time is that you are communicating to yourself. And when you're engaged in a power pose, just for two minutes, Amy Cuddy's research has shown, for two minutes, your testosterone levels go up which is what you want because that's what's connected to power and feeling confident. And your cortisol levels go down, which is what you want because you don't want to be very stress reactive. So if you do power poses for just two minutes before you have to give a talk, she also emphasizes this in her presentation. Don't do this during the interview. You don't stand there in your Wonder Woman pose or with your arms stretched out you know, while you're doing your presentation in front of the audience. That's going to be kind of weird and awkward. and The audience isn't going to know what the heck's happening at that point. Do it before your presentation. Get those testosterone levels up and get the cortisol levels down. It, it absolutely will help you trick your mind and the body into feeling more confident than what you really are at that moment in time. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, that it really does help. Combining the power poses with controlled breathing exercises in through the nose, out through the mouth. Do those power poses. I did my first TEDx presentation back in September and I was backstage doing my power poses and doing my controlled breathing before I went out on stage. And it was one thing that really helped me manage that anxiety because I gotta tell you I was nervous but hey I'm human too and speaking of being human this brings us to my final point number five give yourself permission to be human you're not gonna be perfect nobody ever presents a perfect presentation as an audience member I'm sure you have watched lots of speeches and you've seen many presentations where you felt, man, that was perfect. But I guarantee you, if you were to talk to that presenter and ask them how they think it went, where were their mistakes, I guarantee you every single one of them will, will be able to tell you, you know, I wish I had done this differently, or I wish I had said that instead of this. Everybody who does a presentation makes mistakes. The most important thing you can do for yourself is to acknowledge I'm human, and it's okay if I stumble a little bit, 
The most important part of this presentation is the message. Making sure the audience understands the message that you're trying to convey. That's all you need to be worried about. And those are five things that you can do in order to effectively handle your anxiety. So let's recap really quickly. If you have a plan in place, if you have practiced that plan, because practice makes better, not perfect. If you stop worrying about your hand gestures, just focus on the message and let your hand gestures, your body movement, your posture, your facial expressions complement your message. Don't worry about that anymore. Do your power poses beforehand so you can get that testosterone up and you can get the cortisol down. But finally, understanding that you are human and that putting all of these things together, yes, it is going to help you manage your anxiety more effectively. However, mistakes are still going to happen, but it's not the end of the world. You just keep going. Don't apologize to the audience. Don't let them know if you do make a mistake because we don't know what you practiced at home. We don't know what you wrote on that outline. If you happen to switch main point one with main point two, we don't know. So don't let us know that you made a mistake. And other things that you can do, but in the interest of time, I felt like these were the five things that probably could help you the most and in the quickest way. So till next time, see you again. Take care. Happy practicing.